Welcome back. We left off with inserting into your lease agreement the right of the landlord to evict a tenant immediately if they bring animals into the property when your tenancy agreement prohibits them. Some evictions are straightforward and can be executed without a problem. But in many countries that is not the case. In some countries you just have a sheriff come to the house and you get permission to put all the tenant's belongings out on the curb in front of the property, change the locks on your doors, and as long as they've signed the lease that tells them you have that right, you are protected. But in many countries this does not happen as easily. In the UK, for example, evicting a tenant could be as painful as going to a dentist for a root canal. You have to take them to court, you have to get a bailiff, you have to give notice, so they can be living there a year with you getting no rent from them or from any possible tenants. They can do whatever they want to your property during the time that they are there. And even if you see it happening, you still cannot throw them out of your property. So if you have not already become a property investor, I would strongly suggest that you take a look at the laws about squatters, about evictions, about tenants' rights and landlords' responsibilities before you invest your first penny into it. Take into consideration that in this economic downturn, people are losing their jobs. They're using what little savings they have for food and immediate essentials. And with the best intentions in the world, they cannot afford to pay the rent. What that means to you is that if there is no money in their bank account, you're not going to get any rent. It also means that they could be forced to close their account, in which case you may have no legal recourse. So it's not just a question of whether you have the endurance to evict people from their home because you haven't been paid and they cannot afford to pay you, or whether you can afford to have them live there rent free, however long it takes for them to get a job. Now, if none of these things make you nervous and you feel that you can handle all of these issues in a way that won't be terribly stressful for you, either emotionally or financially or both, when you feel that you will get a good return on your money in this market, or you're willing to wait another 10 years before the market turns around well enough for you to get a good return on your money, then go for it. Become a property investor. So to summarise, make sure you know the law in your country regarding tenants' rights and landlords' responsibilities. During a downturn economy, your tenants may lose their jobs and may not be able to pay your rent. Evicting tenants is costly and time-consuming and you may not be able to make a good return on your property for at least 10 years. I had an email from a viewer, Mrs L, who writes about a previous show on credit cards. She writes, I do not agree with your advice that credit cards ought to be used only for emergency purchases. That may have been the case when they were instituted, but that may have been before the days of bank fees. Nowadays, those who are in a certain age group and who are not students are hit with bank fees for every withdrawal. Because of this, ever since I had a credit card, I feel bound to use it for every purchase or I'll be stung by a bank fee for withdrawal. In fact, I get annoyed when using a retailer who does not accept credit cards. I do not like carrying large amounts of cash. Mind you, I do pay off my credit card every month and my annual account fee is only $25. I extol the advantages of using a credit card to those in my age group at every opportunity. I went away for three weeks without my credit card and had to withdraw hundreds of dollars in cash to avoid fees. I did not like carrying large amounts of cash. Well, thank you for your email. As long as you pay off your balance every month, it doesn't matter whether you use credit cards or not. But for the 98 to 99% of the population, most people do not pay their credit cards off every month. Therefore, what I said on my program still goes. You are in the 1 or 2% who do not carry a balance, who will not be paying exorbitant APR rates of interest. Therefore, you would be one of those people I term as having no credit card debt. If you will recall on many of my shows, I spoke about the necessity to pay off credit cards and not to carry debt. Be as debt free as you possibly can. If you are paying off your credit cards every month, essentially, you're debt free. Next week, we'll look into some legal issues involving evictions and money laundering that may arise between landlords and tenants. See you next week.